everyone, welcome to the QAOps channel, I'm Rafael Lima and today we want to be talking about creating shell script uh, per se, but I'll be showing you how you can access a remote server and I'm going to do some linking with everything that we have been discussing and have been showing you so far right? so if you haven't watched any of the videos that I, that I, that I did about Unix and, uh, and shell and bash I'll be posting the videos here and I'm also going to be putting some cards here so you can you can spot those. If you haven't subscribed, please do so so you can and turn on the, the bell so you can receive the notifications of my new video, my newest videos. Alright, so let's start. So we have been we have been talking about uh, Unix and command line and servers and, and so on and so forth. I would like to show you how you can access a remote server right and this is really important because you might uh, you might want to access a an, an actual remote server you might want to access a docker container or a container can could be in your computer or a container could be in circle ci right so if you're running a circle ci job and you need to do some debugging and, and logging to the actual container that's running your your job then Circle CI allows you to do that, and you can do that on Circle on, on a remote server. You can do it on a local container, or and, and and it's very it's very important that you know at least the basics of some command line. So I have a remote server that I'm going to access and, and show you how you do this. So you do this with a command called SSH. Right, and usually what you do is you pass on a the SSH command, and you say which user are you going to be logging. So you, you need to have a user. So in this case, this is the user that I that I access, and then you're going to pass the host. It could be uh, an IP or it could be a domain. Right, so this is the host that I'll. I'll be accessing uh, and that's pretty much it this is not going to work but the command uh, per se is going to be valid right uh, in my case I need to pass some extra commands here because by default the command is going to try on port 22 and this server is not responding to port 22 is port is responding to port 2222 and also by default this server is trying to authenticate using public uh, private authentication keys the same that I used uh, to show you how you can authenticate with github so I would have to set up a public key uh, and a private key right uh, uh, on, on their server and on my computer right uh, so you need to pass another parameter saying I don't want you to use authentication keys I want you to use passer so this is dash O and I'm saying public key authentication no so I do not want to use public key authentication so if I try to execute this command and I use my password it worked All right, so it looks like it uh, it's responding to port 22 right another way that we could do this because I thought it was not the support told me that it was only 2222 I would say dash P for port and I'll change the port right so now it's going to respond to port 2222 right so if I put any other port here let, let me change here see the server does not respond to that port so the default port is fine so I pass my password and I'm there so you can see that I'm not on my computer anymore I'm not on here right I'm on this other place here right and I have all the basics command I don't have all my aliases so there are a few aliases here LL works LA does not work uh, and doesn't we don't we don't have much here but I can we can create right so this is the point right so uh, you're going to have to have some basic com uh, knowledge of VI because 
there is there isn't any editing r right now unless you want to be copying file over right the, you, you can copy a file to our computer I'm going to show you and you can copy the file back but that's going to take a long time so I'm not sure if you want to do that so we we have access here right so I'm on the home of that user so one of the things that I have is I can do a bash rc and you're going to see that there are already some stuff there I did not create this this is what this is already there from the host and here there is a line saying user specific aliases and function so if you have any specific alias or function that you'd like to create you can put it here right so we already learned how to do this using VI. I'm going to post the video if you haven't watched the, my VI video. Uh, but then I'm going to be entering searching mo insertion mode by typing E and I'm going to type by, by typing I, sorry. And HG or history grab, just to show you. And I'm going to do history pipe grab. I'm going to leave here. I'm going to say source bash RC. I'm going to say hg source my history pipe grab is there if I leave it and come back I can do hg source because that bash rc is being run all the time right being executed every time that I log in so you have a quick way road so this is really good because now we can just put uh, we can just put everything that you need here on your bash rc right here under here and you every time that you log in you're going to have uh, the profile the way that you like with the alias that you that you use and you're going to be more productive but if you need to send files back and forth how you can do that right so one thing before I forget if you are logging into a docker container so docker containers are ephemeral that means that it's it's meant to live for a short period of time so a container is going to get destroyed and you're going to spin up another container right? unless you hold specific files in your computer which you can do you can say i want to run this docker container but pointing to a volume to a hard drive on the host on the host computer unless you do that that container is going it's not going to hold any state of any file so if you create a file there, that container is going to get destroyed and once you create another container, it's going to come from, from scratch. You can say that I'm going to spin up this container and I want to use this folder on my host computer. And every new container is going to be linked to a folder on your host computer and then you can have the normal aliases that you like to do but that's only useful if you use that a lot if you have the the habit of going to a container to do any, anything that you need usually you don't need to do that because the way the container was created was that you you basically check logs and, and do basic stuff you don't actually need to do any management so right so change uh, uh, exchanging fire right so one thing that we can do I can create a new file. I'm going to say Rafael.txt file. I'm going to get out of here, and I'm now I'm on my computer, right? I exited, ex, exited, ex, exited the host. Uh, so what I can do? I can use another command called scp, right? So instead of saying ssh, I'm going to say scp. I still need to say do not do uh, public key authentication. And now I say, okay, I want to go into the host and into this specific folder and I want to retrieve a file. So what I do is I pass everything that I, that I need in order to authenticate, which is my user and the host. And now I pass uh, columns uh, and the path that I want, which is slash home3 home3 I think this is yeah home3 uh, slash uh, my home and the file that I created right and then I pass where I want to save the file where I want to download the file this is very similar to the a similar command called cp right which we already talked about so the dot is going to say I want you to 
uh, download to the current folder that I am in. So it's going to request my password. I'm going. It's going to go there and download the file, right? So if I look at here, Raphael, it's here. You even have I have a Raphael too here, but this is what the one that we just downloaded, right? So let me remove Raphael just for the sake of showing you again. And Raphael is here. I can also do the opposite. I can send the file from here to there. Right? So what I can do is say Raphael 2 dot text file, right? And I'm going to Raphael 2 text file hide there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say SCP, but now it changes, right? So I I want to say I want to get Raphael 2 is always always from origin to destination right so my origin with the file that I want to send is Raphael 2 and my destination is the host the information on how to connect to the host and the folder of the host so when I do this it's going to request my password of course and voila the file is there if I log into if I log there get Raphael 2 is here hi there great so awesome so another thing that we also can do is I can also say I would like to execute some commands uh, remotely so what I can do is I can say I want to connect I want to execute a specific command in the host in the remote computer right so I'm on my computer right now and what I'm saying here is I want to connect but instead of actually going into that machine I want just to execute a command and what I'm going to say is touch new file right and it's going to request my password doesn't say much then I'm going to connect to there and I'm going to say new file is already here right you might say it's not working so now let's do another thing so let me delete the files that I already have here because I don't want this so what I'm going to do I'm going to create a shell file right so what I'm, what I'm going to say I'm going to say file.sh and I'm going to open that file. I file. And I'm going to say echo. Right, we learned that this is going to be printing. Hi. And I'm going to say hi to a variable that was that would be coming in from the terminal. So I'm going to say hi in the variable one. And I'm going to export everything this to a log file. So what I'm I'm printing hi in whatever I pass as a parameter and I'm going to send the std out the output of that the echo to the log file is not going to be into the terminal it's going to be into the log right so if I execute I need to give permission to execute the file so I can say that I can I can execute the file and I say QA ops now when I do cat QAOps, sorry, cat log is going to say hi QAOps. All right, file is there. So now I can get out of the, the server and now on, I am on my local computer. Now I can say, right, I can execute dash home three dash. Uh, what was the name? 3871 slash file dot sh and I pass whatever I want, say Rafael Lima. Rafael. Rafael. I'm going, oh, my password, uh, my password now, 
and now I'm going to connect into that one again and when I say cat log hi Raphael so I was on my remote I was on my local computer executing a command on my uh, remote computer right so it, why are you going to need, you need to do that? Maybe you need to run some commands on a remote server for some instance. You don't actually need to go into that server every time to execute a command. You might want to get some logs and you can uh, copy the logs or you need to execute a shell file that's going to tell the server to send those logs to a specific place. You don't need to go into that server and send it yourself. You can have a script that's doing that, right? So you can just execute that script remotely. You don't have to go to the hassle of logging, find the file and executing the file and so on and so forth. You can do that without connecting to the computer, right? So a couple of the things that you can do to help your your life a little bit easier. A few commands is a command called df is going to show you the memory, uh, sorry, the hard drives of of a computer, right? So here you cannot read because uh, it's in bytes. Then we already learned that I can do dash h for human readable, and now you can see the volumes and and the spaces that you have. That's going to work also on a Unix. It's going to work. Uh, on, on your local computer, on, an, on, on Linux, on, on a Mac, on Windows, I'm not really sure if Windows is going to understand that. Unless you have a Windows subsystem, a, a subsystem, a Linux subsystem installed in your Windows, which I also show you how you can do that. Right? Um, awesome. Other thing is you might want to know how many, uh, what is the size of specific folder. Right, so there is another command called du. Du is going to say the, the the file size of each file and folder. Right, so here it was just du. I can say du dash h to be human readable, but you can see that it's giving me the count this the size of each file. I don't want the size of each file and I have to do the math on my head. I would like to have the file. The, the size per folder, right? So I can do I did du dash h. I can do du dash s h, which is summary human readable. So now I can I I only have this total size of the current folder that I'm in, and I can say asterisk, which means I want the size the summary size human readable of every folder in this file. In this folder, every folder in this folder, right? Oh, everything. Actually, it's of everything. It's not only the folder. It's everything. So here you have some files, and you have some folders. So I know that this folder is 243 meg, right? And this is going to be the same in in any any computer that you work, right? So let it go. Let me go to QAOps here. I have a few things. I can say du. I can say du dash h, I can say du dash sh, and I can say du dash sh asterisk, and I have all the file sizes here as well, right? I have df also and df dash h, which is going to be human readable uh, volumes of my folder. So that's basically it. This is what I want to show you. Uh, if you haven't, if you like it, please give the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Mark the bell so you can uh, receive the notifications. And I hope to see you next video. Thank you.